Ciao ragazzi, welcome back to Inter Worldwide. Uh, today is a nice one, today is a special one because I welcome back my brother all the way from Texas. Uh, Mo, I cannot even say in words how good it is to have you back on Inter Worldwide. Welcome back, Fratello. Uh, thanks a lot, man. I'm very happy to be here again. I'm sorry I was away from everybody, from the fans, from Inter. I was away for personal reasons, family reasons. I had to go back to Egypt. And uh, I'm very glad to be here again and I'm ready to roll with Inter for next season. And I'm here to talk with you about Inter. Beautiful. Let's just get going straight away because there is absolutely heaps to talk about in a busy week for Inter despite the Euro and Copper America distractions. So, child to Marvel Lawson as well, who has joined us a few times in the last uh, couple of weeks. I guess we'll just start off with the biggest news, man, the, the $70 million news, to be honest, brother Mo. Uh, Ashraf Hakimi Lamborghini, who was so good for us uh, last season, uh, one of our best players. It looks like he's on the move to Paris Saint-Germain, who apparently have absolutely no budget uh, whatsoever when it comes to the world of football at the moment. It's like they're controlling it from the back of their computer screen. But around about 70 million looks to be coming in for Ashraf Hakimi. So you have the floor, my friend. Tell the people watching at Inter Worldwide what you think of this deal. The number one thing everybody needs to know, it's not confirmed yet. It's not official yet. There is a negotiation of 10 million between Inter and Paris Saint-Germain. They want to pay 70 million, including bonuses. Inter won 70 million plus bonuses if they win Champions League and they win the league. So this is the discrepancy here. Second thing is uh, Ashraf Hakimi has been great for us. I like the guy. I liked his style. But as we used to say in Egypt about El Ahli, one of the biggest clubs in Africa, clubs, do not wait for anybody and teams are teams, players are players. We are not, Ashraf Hakimi is not messy. We liked him. We were not built based on Ashraf Hakimi. He's a great player, but he, everybody is replaceable in this modern day. Everybody is. And the financial issue is way bigger than Ashraf Hakimi or Lukaku or Lautaro or everybody. They need to sort this out because we have seen Milan go into a deep hole in the last seven, eight years just because of the financial issues. And if we do not solve the issue now, it's going to haunt us later. People say, yes, we want a, a Scudetto winning team again, but you have to think about when people come knocking on the door and asking for their money, this is where the shit starts. This is where you'll have to sell everyone. And now we're selling one of the stars for a big profit for a fullback. He has been great. He's one of the best fullbacks in the world, if not the best. Yeah. But 70 million is, I think it's a world record for a fullback. Nobody has ever landed a fullback for 70 million. Nobody ever sold a fullback. I think it was Kyle Walker for 50 million yeah. from Tottenham to Man City uh, four years ago. That was the world record for a fullback. And Inter fans should be sad that he, that he left or he's leaving, but they should not be upset. So there is a ma massive difference between feeling sad that a player that helped us winning Scudetto, helped us getting back on track, but being upset with the club, you shouldn't. What do you think about that statement? You should be sad, but not upset. I think just because the fans had to wait so long for someone to come in that position, we saw players come in and out kind of in the same season as well. You're talking um, basically since the days of Mike Con, you have players like, oh, well, now I can't even remember off the top of my Johnny, head. But, you know, you remember Johnny? Montoya, or Jonathan, Skilata. and then you had Montoya came in as well from Barcelona and barely saw the pitch. Um, Skelotto. Did Kana Erkin come in as a right wing side or a left wing side? Right wing back. Right He's wing back as well. We signed him and then he didn't even get to take the pitch as well. Jonathan. Jonathan. And I guess like I, the, on the way there, there was Cancelo. And I thought for a second he might be here for a while. But our club's finances weren't exactly in the best position then. And now they're in a position where you can reap 70 million. But it's not exactly. We won't be laughing to the bank with that 70 million. We'll be using it to cover the debts and to cover the finances that we need to cover. There's nine people here right now. So make sure you like the video. And let us know where you're coming in from. Number four says, Chow from Ali Asif, the single biggest interest from Pakistan. <laughs> How are you going, brother? Like <laughs> How are you going, my bro? Franco Velet, 
Hi guys, miss you, Mo. That's oh, nice. Thank you so hearty. much, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry being away. It's a lot of personal things, and I'm I'm happy to be here with Anthony again. <laughs> Uh, Franco, who's been around recently a lot, uh, that's the reality. We are sad, but we can't complain. You forget Wallace. I think I regret Wallace as well. Oh, <laughs> Indra Hardy says, sacrificing Hakimi is like medicine. It tastes like shit, but Inter need that money. Losing Hakimi and keep others key players is okay for me. Mo, do you think that we plan on selling any of the other big untouchable players besides Hakimi still? I think based on that, so, so we have our, uh, the news that we read lately about the um, the debt that we have to pay by the end of 2022, I still think we are going to sell more. And I know that fans, they don't want to hear this, but we might. But who has the money other than PSG? It's Man City, Man United, Barcelona, they don't have any money. Real Madrid, they have their eyes set on Mbappé or Haaland. So I don't think they're going to shop at uh, in our club. Uh, I think the the only one that can be sold, and I think, in my personal opinion, and I know that a lot of people don't like this, is Lautaro Martinez. If someone knocks on the door and offers a hundred million, we would be stupid not to sell. His price is not going to increase. He's a 23 years old who just scored 16 goals for the club, and if a hundred million comes in, he should be sold. We can replace him with somebody else. Akil, how are you, my friend? Good to see hey, you. Hey, man. Hey, Mo. How are you, bro? It's it's so good to see you. It's so good to hear your voice again. Um, so happy to have you back, brother. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yo, there's going to be a lot more to talk about. So, Akil, welcome back to Intel Worldwide, my brother. We're just chatting about the right-back situation at the moment. Um, Hakimi possibly most probably out the door but as mo alluded to not confirmed not 100 percent yet i think marotta is still going to try and squeeze out a little bit more cash from psg you know if psg want to walk around flexing in their lamborghini ferrari porsche in every hour of the day let's try and take them for a little bit of riot a bit of a ride themselves what do you think akil yeah um yeah i mean if there's one team that can you know dish out that kind of cash is psg and uh i mean right now we're in a, we're in a place that we have that leverage um we are you know in a position to really dictate our terms and uh you know we should um there's hakimi is that type of a player that we can really bark in with and we can really squeeze out that extra cash that extra few millions and i, I don't i don't think psg is going to have any problems uh paying that kind of money so yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, squeeze as much as we can, and as much as we hate selling uh, Hakimi, you know, it's again, it's at the end of the day, it's a lot of money, it's a lot of profit, and Marota and ent entire organization, I'm sure they'll have a backup plan to it, and I'm sure they'll, you know, have somebody in mind that they can bring in, and they'll use that money for the better. And at the end of the day, I think it'll work out, you know, just as despite, you know, having any setbacks or if you don't like it as much, but it, it'll work out, I think. Yeah, Indrahari makes a good point as well. He's the only asset that we have that's received an offer in that sort of realm anyway. So, you know, we've got we've got issues that we need to fix fast. Um, Indrahari also says, don't mind Zappa Costa coming to Inter, proven Serie A. I don't mind him. I don't agree with all, you know, when his name comes out, all the fans jump on the whole, his shit bandwagon. He's not a shit player, but, you know, I really don't think he offers anywhere near what we're looking for on that right-hand side. I personally would prefer Lazzari from Lazio. Uh, there were some news headlines coming out that we were agreeing a fee of about 25 to 26 million. Uh, I'll go back to you, Akil, seeing as though you just arrived. Harry, um, and hello to Mario Delgado from Peru. Of the right back names that have been linked so far to replace Ashraf Hakimi, um, who's who's the first one on your list, man? And what do you think of the nomination so far? You know, I think I'm excited about Lazari. Um, one of the biggest reasons for that is is because he's played under Inzaghi. Inzaghi knows his style. Inzaghi knows. Bro, how are you, my friend? And <laughs> hey, <laughs> oh man, yeah, nice, nice to have him. Um, yeah, so Lazari, I think it will be the top choice for me if, uh, if it was just a matter of opinion because, you know, again, Inzaghi knows him. He knows Inzaghi. They've played in, you know, they've been together at Lazio. He knows his strengths and weaknesses. He can bring him in. And 20 to 25 million is a price tag that we can, we can work with. 
Um, and uh, despite, you know, Lazio being a difficult team to work with in, in terms of uh, transfers and all, but it happens. And, you know, we've had good negotiations with them in the past. So, yeah, that would be my top choice uh, to bring in for the right back. Nice one. Mo, same question. Over to you. So, I was waiting to talk about Lazari. To be honest, I've, I've watched a lot of Lazio this season, and I think Lazari is, is just Hakimi. <laughs> it's, it's the same. Their main thing is speed and attacking. Hakimi couldn't cross. Lazari uh, can cross. I'm not bashing Hakimi. I'm just saying there is a massive difference between a full ba- a wing back that plays for Simone Inzaghi and Lazio. And I'm sorry for any, I apologize for any Lazio fan. I mean, no offense, but to play for Antonio Conte in Inter in that winning, uh, the Scudetto winning squad makes you a better player and makes you look better. Uh, media wise and uh, uh, numbers wise, everything. Playing for Lazio, like for example, Luis Alberto might be the best player in Serie A, but he's never gonna show his abilities in Lazio as much as Juventus or Inter or stuff or, or teams like this. Lazzari can be a great asset. And I, I, I promise you this, if Lazzari plays for Inter next season and we keep the same squad, Inter is not going to drop and Lazzari, his value will go up to 50. Mm. Because it's just, it's the, 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 the requirements that, that for, for Lazio is different than Inter. Inter is a stronger team. They have a stronger defense. They have better midfield. And I know that a lot of people say Lazio has a great midfield, but Inter has, they have better players overall, like better squad overall, better strikers. I know people like Immobile, but Immobile is, is nothing close to Lukaku, for example. Uh, Korea is not Lautaro Martinez. So this is where... Yeah. Lazzari is going to look better. I know that people say, oh, he's from Lazio. He's not a winner. He might be a winner. You never know. But his his main thing is speed. Hakimi could not defend for anything. And Lazzari is not a defender. So we'll wait and see. And in between them, you're making a 45 million to add to your books. This is what happens. So it's a great move. It's, it's, it is a great move, but Indrahari also points out over Lotito's dead body, Inter can yeah. get Lazzari. However, like the, the rumor came out really quickly after we were linked to Lazzari that Lotito said that it wouldn't happen. I think that those rumors were bullshit because there wasn't an actual direct quote from Lotito. It came out too quickly, in my opinion. So the, these are going to come out in the, um, in the papers no matter what. And you've got to remember Maurizio Sari coming in to coach Lazio with his system. Does he need Lazzari? Is he a player that's going to play for Maurizio Sarri? No. How many other players can fetch you 25 million just like that for Lazio? Can I, I add mean, something here? Of can course you can. And, and if you're one of the 16 people watching the video, that's a nice little jump. Make sure you like the video and let us know where you're from and where you're watching from. Yes, Mo? Said Hosai was just linked from Napoli to Lazio. Why do you think that happened? Because of a 4 3 3 system. Right away, mm. they need a fullback and Lazzari. Is not a fullback, he's a wing back. And Hakimi is not a fullback, he's a wing back. They can't play in a four in the back. They need a lot of time to adjust to this system. And th- he will, Napoli, uh, Lazio will sign a fullback that is fit for a four in the back system. So this is something that people need to understand. Lazzari is not a fullback. He yeah. can't, I don't think he can play four in the back. Yeah. What about you, Akil? What do you think? I think one of the things is, uh, I mean, if we have identified him as a potential replacement, I think we should act fast, uh, act swiftly, and get him, you know, as as quickly as possible. Because, again, when when the Euro ends and when things get into higher gear, we don't want to drag the situation because there, there's going to be other teams around. There's going to be, obviously, what Mo just pointed, you know, with Hayside just being linked to Lazio, you know he's he's the type of player that Sari wants, and they everybody knows that. Okay, Lazari might be available in the window, so the other teams are not moving. We should make it quickly. We should make it swiftly. And yeah, I mean, Lolito is is, is a hard uh, management to deal with, but we've dealt with him in the past. And when it comes to money, 
when you offer that kind of money, anybody will deal with you, man. Um, despite, you know, it doesn't matter how tough that is. Um, but yeah, I think we should definitely act quick, get him, yeah. get him as early as possible so he can have the, enough time with the team. And, you know, he can definitely be part of that team. And, you know, like Mo said, he, he's got the quality, he's got the pace that we need. And, and he's got the trickery too. So I, I watched a couple of Lazio games and not a few seasons, this season and the season before. He's, he's a decent player, a decent player going forward. He can really get into those spaces and, you know, make the move the ball and cross the ball in and can shoot as well. So, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a good, exciting move. Hopefully, hopefully we can pull through for that. All right. I need to talk to Mo about something. Akil and I did do the, the almost done video the other day, but now it's official. Mo. You need to give your verdict to Inter Worldwide on the Hakan move. Hakan has moved to Inter. He has swapped for the superior side of Milan, a team of champions, not a team of just teetering on that top four position until the end of the season. Mo, what are your thoughts? You don't look as excited as maybe Akil and I were. We kind of gave the deal the real big, That's big benefit of the doubt. <laughs> He's but, showing the poker face. So, yeah. so the, Okay, so the deal itself is... A genius is, is a Marotta deal, is a Daniel Alves deal, is a Paul Pogba deal. Yeah, this is the deal itself. Talking about the player, I never liked the player, mm -hmm. but he's black and blue now, and I'll give him every support I can as a fan. And I wish him the best, of course. I wish that he will be the best player in the world. Do I think he's going to be the best player in the world? I don't think so. Is he Luis Alberto? I hope he proves me wrong. I hope he does. Like, but based on what I what I saw last year, he's not the greatest player. And to be honest, four million is only they only gave him four million because he came for free. Otherwise, he would not have gotten four million. Yeah. And I don't know how long is the contract. I think it's four years or something like Three. this. Three. Three years. That's not a bad move. Three years, twelve million. I'm sure you need depth for Champions League and for Coppa Italia. And is he better he than anybody? Okay, let me ask you guys. If he's better than anybody we have, no. But that's Akil was just about saying. Do you think he starts many games? Yeah. I think he starts a fair bit. I think I think he's being brought into play. I think he's definitely being I, brought into play. I think. What based kind of a role do you think he'll have for Inzaghi? I think he's gonna start every game. He's gonna be a starter. So Which is, it contradicts what I said before, but I'm looking at the squad. If Sensi is not fit, the type of the, the 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 player of Arturo Vidal, who I'm not sure if he's leaving or staying, that are they're waiting for Copa America to finish. Yeah, uh, I think he starts every game. Barella, Brozovic, I think he starts every game because yeah. the way Inzaghi plays is he had Barella is Milinkovic Savage. And Hakan is basically Luis Alberto. It's as simple as this. He plays the extra player in the midfield that goes to play the number 10, which is Hakan. This is why Inter signed Hakan Chilonoglu. Since if he's fit, he's definitely going to play. I'm not sure if he's staying in the club. Vicino actually might play as well, but I, I, I think the club is willing to sell Vicino. But Hakan will start. <laughs> based yeah. on the squad we have now. Yeah, so Hakan is cover for Ericsson Simple. Yes, definitely. Uh, but also we saw Ericsson drop back into the register role a lot under Conte last season. That's not a role you're going to see Hakan drop into. So you're really going to see Marcelo Brozovic play a position that he really excelled in under Spalletti when his move from Sevilla fell through. You're going to see Brozovic drop back a lot more and anchor the midfield a little bit. And um, we'll go to Mo first. What are your thoughts about that? Because Brozovic was allowed a little bit more room last season to move off the ball with Christian Eriksen adapting. And, you know, obviously, God willing, it's a horrible situation. But, yes, we are bringing in Hakan to cover for the midfield depth now that Eriksen possibly won't be there. But this isn't really a tactical swap for swap, Mo. Am I right there? No, it's it's not. It's a, it's a different type of player because Hakan cannot play the deepest midfielder. He's not a register. Like, the way we did it at the end of the season is that Eriksen would drop and Brozovic would get a little bit of space to move up front and Barella is the guy behind the forward. Hakan is the guy behind the forward. It's not Barella. Mm. The only yeah. thing that I don't understand and the difference between Conte and Inzaghi is that Inzaghi 
plays a defensive mid with a destructive capabilities in the midfield, which is Lucas Leva. But Brozovic is a regista, is a deep line playmaker. And that's a massive difference between both players. I don't know how Inzaghi will solve this because he pushes his two midfielders way up around Lucas Leva, like Luis Alberto and Milinkovic Savic, who actually sometimes goes inside the 18 to be actually the highest player on the field. Most of the time, they play crosses for him. I don't think Barella will do this, but Barella will be in the 18 most of the time or around that area. So he needs a destructive player to play that role. Ambrozovic, his defensive abilities is as similar to Jorginho. They are very good distributors with the ball. They find solutions for the defense, for passing to go up and to do passes left and right. But they're not the people who can stop a counterattack with a tackle. They're not physically strong like Jorginho. And as you said in, in, a, in a separate video about Jorginho, he's not a, a physical player. What is going to happen? Is Inzaghi going to switch his tactics? I don't know. But this is the only difference between the squad in Inter and look and, and squad in Lazio. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I'll go to Akil for that. And also, um, that's a really good comment here from Ahmed. Having Barella and Blozvic, this will decrease the pressure on Hakan. I think he will perform better than last season with Milan. Agree. Akil, what about you, man? Yeah, that's that's true. That's a comment. Was yeah, that's, that's one of the concern. You know, um, Lucas Leiva, the role he plays, can Brozovic take that role, and will he do as good as Lucas Leiva does uh, at Lazio? The answer to that, well, you know, it's it's very tricky because Brozovic, you know, in one so in a lot of games uh, that I watched for Inter, you know, over the years, one of the things that I always saw the the missing link was the defensive grid um that was missing from brozovic you know yeah he drops back and he tries to cover the lines but is he a good tackler is he can he get in between the lines or can he get in between the passing lanes that um mentality does he have that and it, it was something that he lacked a little bit and that's a bit of a concern so yeah great point mo that you know is he going to be that good is he going to be that player for us Inzaghi is going to try because obviously we, we're not linked with any defensive midfielder at the moment. Um, I don't see Brozovic move into any other team. There's nothing around it. So I think what's going to happen eventually is that Inzaghi is going to try to mold Brozovic to play that role, um, be that defensive midfielder. Because yes, he, they're going to have, Inzaghi is going to push Barella forward a lot. He's he's a type of a coach that really likes to run the game with his midfield. So Barella is going to have a huge role going forward. Hakan is going to have a great role going forward. But who's going to cover the lines? Brozovic will have a very tough season ahead. It, it's 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 something that you know we're going to have to wait and see. Um, do I think that we should we, we sell him and get a different player? I don't know. I don't think so. I think we should see how it is we should work with it we should give Inzaghi some time with the players you know obviously they're they're on vacation right now there's 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 no training there's nothing going on so it's it's too early to say I think the assessment will be made um but yeah this is this is an interesting interesting topic that you know going forward we should be keeping an eye on because it is a very very, very tricky position and very important indeed too. I mean, despite having a great defense or a great goalkeeper or whatever, that defensive midfielding position is extremely important in Inzaghi's formation. Don't get me wrong, guys. Don't get me wrong. Brozovic is a way better player than Lucas Leva. Just, just, I just want to get this and straight. Vecino, which yeah, is what uh, Mohamed was course. saying. Yeah, Chris. There is, there is no comparison here, right? Like, this is, this is a... No, uh, like is. A, it's a World yeah. Cup finalist. This is purely he's, he's like talking, this is a different level player. Right, this right? is purely like, in terms of yeah, defensive capability. In terms right? of like, yeah. uh, defensive capability, defensive attributes, the tackling, the covering, the lines, the passing lanes. It, it's a different attribute than of being a just a deep playmaker. You know, it's it's different. Uh, and Lucas Leva has been doing that for years, years and years. So he's he's really cemented his position in, in, or his name in that position. Brozovic does that too. There's no question he's, he did that. But Conte really wanted Brozovic to come forward with the ball and have that flexibility in that movement. 
So it, it's a different position. It's a different attribute. So yeah, quality wise, overall quality wise, Brozovic is obviously way ahead. But just that one aspect is is, is uh, this is his weak point, and this is something that you know Inzaghi will make an assessment for. So 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 let me. Did you mind, Anthony? Just a little bit. I, I want to explain a little bit to some people. The difference between Conte and Inzaghi, I'm talking about the difference between Lazio and, and Inter last season. Lazio is a team that was built on, that was, the, the, the game they were playing is a bit, a bit of a risky game. That means we'll take chances. We'll cross if we only have one player in the A team. We'll try to shoot. We'll try to do this. So they always get caught on the counter attack. And this is where Lucas Leva came helping. He will break attacks. So it's always Luis Alberto and the two fullbacks and Milinkovic Savage next to the forwards. And then Lucas Leva had to stop that. Even at Cherby used to go up a lot, if you guys remember. Well, the difference is Inter, when we had the ball as a team, we don't lose it. We'll have the ball 60 to 70% until we create a chance and either going to go to a goal kick or a corner or the goalie will hold it, but there's no counter attacks. And that was in the beginning of the season. We used to get caught a lot on the counter attack, if you guys remember, yeah. because we didn't have a locus lever. But then Conti adjusted and said, if we're going to defend, we're going to defend as a team. So I don't need a defensive mid because I'm actually defending with 10 players. Yeah. Lukaku used to defend, Lautaro used to defend everybody. You remember when everybody called us out and said, oh, you're a defensive team, you're a defensive team. It's because we did not have the Nicolo Kante, the one who... The Rodri, you know, the, uh, the people that break attacks. Yeah. So the difference is Conte, when we had the ball, we had the ball and we don't lose it. We'll, we'll cross it and we'll get a corner kick or a goal kick or something like this. Simone Inzaghi plays risky game. It was like, we'll go up, we'll cross. We'll go up, we'll shoot from outside. So always play that risky through pass to Immobile, to Korea, to, uh, to anybody. And then they lose it. And then now uh, Lucas Leva cuts the ball and breaks that attack. Is he going to change his tactics, Simone and Zaghi, having better players? This is what we have to wait and see when they start playing this uh, uh, the, the friendlies. Is he going to be a position-based uh, uh, coach? Or is he still going to play the expansive Lazio football that cross, go up, do all the risky passes? And that will and answer that things. Question. Yeah, and uh, I was reading up on uh, some of these uh, um, journalists were talking about, you know, Zaghi being the players' coach. He's a type of coach that that really adapts to the players and the, the way pl players are, um, and he gives a lot of freedom to the players too. So he play he pre pre he comes out with a team that is built around his players. So if if there's a player that has a certain quality, he will make sure that player has that freedom to explore his quality and show his quality in a certain way. So uh, to what you said, you know, if, if Brozovic is, you know, if it's going to, if it's going to be that defensive midfielder, if he has that quality, Inzaghi will surely explore that. If he doesn't, then Inzaghi will adjust his style of play according to the players that he has. He's a player's coach. Is that what they said? So, He's he's not as stubborn as Conte. He's not gonna instill his ideology or his mentality on these players like to the bone. Like you know, no, you gotta do this or it's my way or the highway. It's not gonna be like that. Zagi's more adaptable. He's he's the Mister Nice Guy. He's gonna work with the players and the way their attributes are and the way their qualities. And he's gonna build the team around those players. And you know, the Barella. I think his his role is going to be really important going forward, but his role is going to be equally important come, dropping back and covering the lines because we know Barella can, you know, really go up and down the pitch all game. Brozovic is going to have that similar role. Hakan, we'll see, you know, he he obviously has a big task ahead. The midfield is, is going to be challenged a lot this season. Um, so, again, I, I'm actually excited for this whole... whole uh, um, this whole season because I really want to see how Inzaghi molds this team to play the way he wants to, and I really want to see what when he gives these players the freedom to the ball. I can't wait to see how they how they come in that way. And how it's gonna it's an exciting season ahead for me. Anthony, what do you think, brother? 
I'd like to see him adapt the Antonio Conte blueprint and put his nice little spin on it because, you know, this is a really working, um, this, it's working. It worked for us for two seasons, basically. So if he can take the Antonio Conte blueprint that a lot of these players who now that have played in a system that has won a title before, you know, they've got that extra motivator in them because a lot of these players, they were in their physical peak but mentally, they still needed something big like a league title to keep them going because you can really fall off mentally if you're waiting too long for those accolades to come. So those players like Bastoni, Barella, Lukaku, Lautaro, Haki, oh, well, not Hakimi anymore, but you know what I mean. The players that all won their, their first league title, they're going to go into a really confident next season. I hope that the squad is ready because I think Inzaghi is ready for the challenge. I hope the squad is ready for the next challenge of competing under another manager. I know they were all attached to Antonio Conte, but surely you'd hope that our players are smarter enough in this profession and in this industry to know that there is absolutely nothing permanent in football. You are in a temporary, um, temporary environment in every aspect of the sport, in my opinion. We need to have a bit of a chat about the goalkeeper situation because a couple of people have written in the chat, um, who would we get to replace Handanovic? I don't think we're replacing Handanovic this season in our financial situation. I think in an ideal world, we can bring in a starting goalkeeper, but that's just not going to happen. Overnight, we have re-signed a player that actually started playing for Inter in 2002. He spent four years at the club and made one appearance. His name is Alex Cordaz. He's an Italian goalkeeper, 38 years old, who has spent his last seven professional seasons playing for Crotone. And you know what? He hasn't been that bad. He's made something like almost... I think 250, almost 200, in between 200 and 250 games for Crotone. So he, he's, a, he's a capped player. He's going to be our third choice goalkeeper this season. And I think now it's time to say with him at number three, are we moving Dejan Stankovic's son to number two? Are we selling Radu? What's going on, to be honest? So it, it's a question that needs to be asked. Mo, you have the floor first for this one. It's not really a topic that many people have brought to the surface, so we can't really say much about it. But where do you see our goalkeeper situation heading with the acquisition of Alex Cordaz back after, well, what is it? Let me do 2002. Alex, Alex Cordaz. 19 years. 19 years since he, was, since he signed for Inter. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's just coming to replace Padelli, right? Like this Padelli, is, I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is what it is. And I think we're sticking with Andanovic next season. Based on the financial thing, I think uh, we're looking... They were looking at the Fiorentina... Uh, uh, goalkeeper, I, I can't remember his name, Dragovsky. yeah, Dragovsky. But I think if if we don't get a massive discount on him, we can't like we can't do anything. There is another issue, like they can actually sell Radu to a club and 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 like just do a swap if anybody wants Radu because that's the only way we can actually have. A, a new goalkeeper because Handanovic, you're not gonna in this financial situation, you're not gonna put somebody. I'm not sure how much he gets paid about five million or four million or something like this. Yes, yeah, something, something like that. Something you're like not gonna that. put him on the bench, right? That's a lot of money for a bench player. You'll need a replacement for Radu, like a swab, and then a transition with Handanovic. But we're not getting a starting goalkeeper. No. It is a little worrying, to be honest. I, could, I, I see many mistakes coming next season from Hamdanovic. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to go in and say because we won a Scudetto. Uh, it, it's, uh, he needs to be replaced. And I, I do think we'll drop points next season. And they could be title deciding points as well. Indrohari says, what is the target for Limone next season competing for Scudetto and a deep run in the UCL? Akil, you can take this one. Sorry, what was the question again? Question is, what is the target for Simone Inzaghi next season? Scudetto and a deep run in the UCL? Yeah, no, um, 100%. He has to contend for the title. Um, we can't expect anything short of that. Um, there's there's no talk of just competing in the top three or top five or whatever like that. It has to be, he has to contend for the title. He has a team. He has a team that's already there. He's already won the title. All he needs to do is just balance the ship, steer it in the right direction, and make sure we compete for the title. It's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be easy. By any means, other teams are just going to come at us really hard. But the thing with Simone Inzaghi is that he hasn't had a team of this quality ever. What he has done with Lazio in the past, and you guys talked about this in, in earlier videos uh, with Jerry, I think, is uh, he's really kept Lazio afloat this whole time with a very thin squad, 
a few decent players, yes, but he hasn't had the squad depth, the the title winning team, the title winning mentality. Now he has all of it in one package. So this is the time where he should unleash the Simone Inzaghi that we've all heard about. This yeah. is the team to do it, and he has the players to do it. So anything like short, yeah, anything short of a title challenge would not be acceptable. For anybody, so he has to compete. And in terms of UCL, look, it's a very, it's going to be again very tough. It's going to be a tough task. I at least, at least want to want us to get out of the group stage, have a run at it, round of sixteen, even more if we get lucky. But you know, the pots are really, really tricky this time around. So it's going to be tricky. But I do want to see us going forward one step than before. Um, and I think that will be a good success, good start. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, for me personally, I'm not expecting him to win the Scudetto, but as you said, I, I want to be fighting for that title up until the final one, two or three days. We can't have that Scudetto out of reach. Um, as you said, he has the team. And I would agree for the Champions League, I'd just love to get through to the um, past the group stages. And that'll be enough for me in his first season, to be honest. Fight for the title, maybe make a good run in the Coppa Italia. He really likes that tournament, to be honest. Mo, what are your initial expectations of Simone and Zaghi going into next season? We'll win Scudetto. Oh, yeah. And we'll go to the quarter. If we get lucky in the draw in round yeah, 16, that's the thing. which is I'm expecting to get lucky in the draw. In the round. If we don't, okay, let me just put it this way. If we don't face Man City, Barcelona, because with Aguero and uh, Depay, they're stronger, I think we can. Uh, we can make it to the quarterfinal. I think mm -hmm. so. Nice I one. think so. Because every all the other teams are not stronger than last season. These yeah. two teams, Man City is just going to get stronger and stronger. They're going to sign Harry Kane and Jack Grealish, and the squad is just going to get better. These guys are not going to sleep until they win Champions League. They are going to slash 250 million, 100 million on Jack Grealish, and 150 on Harry Kane. If they if they do not sign Harry Kane, they won Lautaro for 100 million. This team oh, is not going to so you you can't face them. Like to be yeah. honest, the squad is 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 nuts. This is it's crazy. It's you know, like he has he has two teams. He can go to the league and the Champions League with with different teams completely, and he still can win both. Yeah. Yeah. King Darian says, how good is Stankovic's son? I actually think he's quite good. I've watched him a lot um, because I love watching the, the um, Primavera highlights every single week, the extended highlights. I absolutely love watching the younger players play. Can we develop him into a goalkeeper? 100%. It might just be the better decision for the club at the moment in its situation to get him to play 38 games again for the Primavera, um, really get his confidence up and then make an adjustment next season. What do you think about Dragoski? We touched on him. I do think he's a good player. I do think he's good enough. For Inter, and he would be a goalkeeper um, that I would go for. But as Indra Hardy also says, Comiso is not going to sell his players cheap. He's struggling to make decisions at the moment too. Akil. Yeah. Um, so when I, I, I was reading about Hadana, but you know, he already has one, one year left on his contract. There's another goalkeeper that has one year left on his contract. He plays in the Serie A, and, and I want you guys to give your opinion about him. Thomas Trakosha from Lazio. His contract also expires next season. He could be a free agent. He has played under Inzaghi, and he uh, replaced their first goalkeeper about five years ago. What do you guys think of him? I'll, let, I'll go to Mo first to talk about um, Thomas Krakoska, the Albanian goalkeeper. Uh, he's pretty good. I like his attitude, but I've noticed he can get a little risky and... Um, yeah, he, he can come out a little bit. He can come out a little bit. But I'll, I'll go to Mo for this one. What do you think? I prefer Dragovski. Better yeah. abilities, better abilities, better command in the 18. Yeah. And uh, Strakocha is not bad. Goal goalkeepers are very risky. You might get yeah. another Handanovic or you might get a nobody. You might yeah, get. The only uh, thing that really that makes me like lean towards him is, is that we can get him for free. I mean, yeah. obviously, uh, Dragoski or Musa from Udinese, they're, they're, they're not super expensive. I mean, we can strike out a similar deal that we did with Handanovic, you know, dish out about $12 million in cash, send out a player, make that a $20, $25 million deal. 
Yeah, that works. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think this is something that Marota Magic is going to come into play in this one um, yeah. to work with Udinese or Fiorentina or even Lazio if that happens. Well, one of the goalkeepers I love in Serie A is uh, uh, the, the Verona goalkeepers. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Silvestri? Silvestri, yeah. yes. Yeah, I like him. I know a lot of people don't like him and they, they say he has a mistake in him, but I think he's a leader on the field and I, I, I just like him his abilities are good and, and and i wanted to see him one day at inter there's options there's options in Serie A, so i guess we'll just have to start next season with what we've got and you know we'll see what happens there um there's still 16 people here right now we've got a couple of other things to cover boys you let me know if you just need to dip out it will be all good but this is a great comment again from Ahmed. super cup can be an achievement against you a kill first. I haven't actually given much thought to that, man. That'll really be a great way for him to get the fans and everyone on his side. You know, I, yeah, th I was just just thinking about it. Um, this could be a good statement and a good starting point for Inzaghi if he can get this Super Cup for us uh, against Juve. I think it'll turn a lot of heads. I think it'll make a lot of fans feel a little more easy, more comfortable. Um, I think it'll be a great start. Uh, it'll be a tough battle, but you know, this is the this is these are the type of tournaments in the cups that Inzaghi really likes to win. Yeah. And you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes if he pulls the magic out of his uh, hat and you know gets us that cup, and that that will be a really really. Because we're start. a better team. We're a better team. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Team. We're talking because we replaced Antonio Conte with Inzaghi. That we're now. The second best team in Italy. We are the best team in Italy. Period. 100%. The better squad. Look at Lukaku in the uh, in the Euro. Oh, he's smacking it, bro. It's embarrassing. It's so good. He's bullying Look people. Look at Barella. Look at but yeah. everybody. Everybody's talking about Locatelli, Verratti, mm. and I know people love Verratti and Jorginho. Nobody ever talked about dropping Barella. Why? He's mm -hmm. the best midfielder Italy has. Exactly. It doesn't exactly. matter. Exactly. Look at Perisic, who were who was there is a lot of agenda against him last season. <laughs> he's rocking. He's yeah. I know that they haven't played their best football, but he's their best, he's better than Modric in the yeah. Croatia squad. Because yeah. we're he's talking about our players are they're, phenomenal. They're killing, it. they're killing it on the big stage, bro. Even you know, in the Hakeem, Copa America. Yes, look at this. Arturo Vidal is is up down defending attacking and this is we're talking about a 34 years old right yeah yeah we yeah. have the best team in italy it, it yeah. doesn't matter what anybody tells me allegri not allegri fallegri mm. i don't care <laughs> we're the best team in italy nice. until this moment nice i wanted to cover one more thing and i wanted to keep on you mo for a second this whole inter spac thing where theoretically inter fans can own shares or a you know, shares of the company can be owned by the fans. Would you like to explain to some of the listeners about how it's basically not a thing in Italy? So, so in Germany, half the club is owned by the fans. They buy shares and it's owned by fans. It's to avoid the, what happened with the Premier League and with the Italian League and, and, and in the Spanish media. It's, it's not controlled by one person. It's not controlled by a billionaire and it's not just controlled by the president. So in Germany, they have this already, this model. I think in, in the UK, in, in, in the Premier League, they're trying to do this again. But the power of the owners are, is, is a lot. But the owners in Italy, they are powerful, but they don't have as much money as the owners in the Premier League. And this is why this solution came into the table. Why don't we get the fans into buying a lot of shares in the club so they own part of the club? Is it... A rule in Italy, I don't know yet, but it might be available for the fans to buy shares in Inter, Lazio, Napoli, Juventus, everybody, right? But it needs yeah. approval from the government. Correct. So now they're planning to generate, they're trying to like a pledge uh, in a way to say, we're serious about this. Can we start to get some sort of movement? Yes, it's it. But is Italy, are the fans going to pay? Maybe. I think they are. If, if you're going to want to stake in it at Inter, you will. It's the same as the German. And, and, and I don't think Italy is smaller than Germany. The Italian people are not as rich as the German people. But I'm sure that the, that, uh, but 
people will pay. Now, here's one problem that you might face in Italy. The clubs in Italy are valued more than the average clubs in Germany. Other than Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, I think the Napoli's, there is a lot of big clubs in Italy, and then there's a lot of bigger clubs in Italy. But in Germany, it's only two big clubs, and the others are not valued a lot. And this is where the value is going to come into play. Who's going to be able to pay? Yeah, fair enough. Akil, anything to add to the whole Interspac situation? Yeah, no, I think it's a great initiative. I think uh, it gives uh, fans that piece of pie, um, and it, it just injects a little bit of more money into the club. I don't see any harm in that. And, uh, you know, I think you know, I think it keeps the fans in the game, uh, helps the team whatever in whatever uh, avenue they can. Uh, it's a good. It's a good thing to have. I think there will be uh, there will be some regulations in place, some rules and regulations, terms and conditions, uh, which are pretty standard. And you know, I think uh, whoever can abide by those and would like to slice the money in and you know have a piece of the pie, I think it's a great thing. Um, I personally would be interested. Mm, very good. Very good. So that's pretty much all we're going to cover here today on Into Worldwide. It's been a fantastic chat. It's been absolutely fantastic to have Mo back. So Mo, any parting words, man? I look forward to covering a lot more content with you soon because the media loves Inter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to talk to you, Akil, and everybody in Inter Worldwide and also the fans. Uh, we'll get people integrated here and we'll talk to a lot of people and We'll try to cover Inter as much as we can. I will try to be back like before. I'm just a little bit, a little bit slowly integrated again to the, the channel. And thank you all for having me. And thanks for every fan that was here. And thanks everybody for watching and the people who welcomed me back. Thank you so much. And I want to thank Inter Worldwide for the support they showed me over the last couple of months. I had really hard time personally and... Thank you, everybody, all my friends and Inter Worldwide and all everybody from the fans that talked to me and a lot of people texted me and they called me. And thank you, everybody, for being there for me. No worries, brother. Anytime, anytime. That's what it's all about. Akil, my bro, thank you from Los Angeles. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. We will speak soon. Yep, definitely. Looking forward to bringing the news to you guys, covering a lot of news. It's going to be a very, very busy summer. And, you know, our main boy, Mo is back, so yeah, definitely we'll be seeing a lot of him, and yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome, guys. From all of us at Inter Worldwide, Forza Inter, and quietly but not so quietly, Forza Italia. Let's go.